Hello again, everyone. I'm Tom Dorado. Welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. Since our last visit, 15th ranked Oklahoma State split a pair of Big 12 road games. And heading into this weekend, the Cowboys are just a half game out of the conference lead. We'll have all the highlights for you, especially those from frigid Manhattan, Kansas, where OSU bounced Kansas State for the 16th time in the last 20 meetings. You know, it's hard to believe this is the 10th anniversary of Eddie's return to Oklahoma State. And we're going to look back on all the fun and off the court feature. And Frederick Jean-Zin, who seems to like being in the starting lineup these days, well, he'll join us in the studio as well. We have all this and a lot more for you, so stay with us. We're back after this opening timeout. The Eddie Sutton Show is brought to you by... Well, welcome back to the show. Eddie, as I mentioned, we went on the road last week since our last TV visit, and we saw the view from the peak and the valley, and I think we all like the look from up top. You know, I mentioned from the penthouse to the outhouse. That's a better description because we had just beaten the Longhorns in a great game and uh, had to go to College Station, which we've had great success with through the years, uh, even going back when I coached at Arkansas. Met a young, very enthusiastic, inspired basketball team, and we were flat and didn't play with the same intensity that we had against the University of Texas and messed around there and, uh, and just got beat. I should say an A&M team that later on went on and played Iowa State pretty tough in Ames. Well, I think that uh, their ball club is getting better, but uh, for a veteran team like ours, well, that shouldn't happen. And uh, I guess that's what makes basketball such a great sport because on that one given day, an underdog can j jump up and bite you and upset you. And that was an upset because we were uh, favored by a sizable margin. But we did respond in a very positive way. And I think everybody was looking around, and I say everybody, the coaching staff, the players themselves, the fans, to see what we would do. And we went to Manhattan, Kansas to play Kansas State, and we really played well up there for the most part. Well, as painful as it may be, let's take a look at our first stop on that road tour this past week at College Station. And again, the Aggies, uh, not a big crowd, a tough atmosphere, one that you had to create your own emotion. One thing that uh, I think a has hired a very good coach. I think they got a brand new arena that they've just been in for the second year. And uh, I think that their coaching staff has got some very good young players, and I think a and is going to be a team to be reckoned with in the future. And like you mentioned, they beat us, and then the next outing they go up to, to Iowa State and play a very, very good Iowa State team and led in that ball game until just in the last few minutes and end up getting beat six or seven points. I think the part that was so aggravating about this game is it three or four opportunities in the game, uh, a couple in each half, we were in a position to just blow them out and leave them in the wake, but each time we let them back in it and that's all they needed. Well, that's the thing that uh, teams must understand. When you get a team down, then you need to deliver the killer punch or the knockout punch, and we just weren't able to do it. We just let, uh, let them get back in the ball game. I think this was especially true there early in the second half when we got out eight points and, and Doug came down on a layup, missed it, got fouled, missed both free throws. We get the ball back, we throw it away, uh, they hit a couple of shots and now the crowd's back in the game and from then on it was a dogfight. This is a stretch of the game where Andre Williams really asserted himself and perhaps helped you and the, your assistant coaches decide, hey, he needs more playing time. Well, I think he will get more playing time as uh, he gets back in tip-top condition. You know, he missed all that time when he was being suspended and uh, his, his uh, eligibility was being questioned by the NCAA. And, uh, I think the fact that he also missed five games where he could have gained some valuable experience. So uh, he is going to help us the remainder of the season. I, I think we saw a little bit of it here. I think we'll see more and more of Andre uh, as far as playing time. Well, we ran a special out, play yeah. there and uh, Desmond comes out and this is the beginning of the second half. When we were up three at halftime, we hit a basket just before that five and he hits that, trip, that uh, three pointer which put us up eight. Now here they come back again. You know, that was the point really where I thought, hey, we're going to knock this loose right here. But again, they go on a 9-0 run, get back in, and then it's give and take until the final five minutes of the game. Well, the biggest thing in that ball game that really hurt us was the fact that, again, we, you know, they didn't shoot free throws very well for a long time, but they kept getting them back on missed shots, and we gave up too many offensive rebounds, too many second opportunities to them. And uh, then down the stretch, they were able to hit the free throw. Boy, there's a nice moved by Frederick, and we're going to have him, as you mentioned, on the show later on this afternoon. Fred had a nice uh, game against a and 5 of 7 from the field, 11 rebounds, 13 points, a double-double, and uh, enjoying, as I said, his starting role. Well, he's uh, 
improved so much. I, I mentioned this so many times, but he just keeps getting better and better. I think he's got a chance to really be an outstanding basketball player before he leaves here. Well, it's like you said so many times on this show, when you let a game get down the final minutes, every mistake is magnified. And if you make it, look at that, you think they won the national championship. You know, we hadn't lost, and I say we, Oklahoma State hasn't played Texas A&M that many times until they joined the Big 12, but since 1924. And uh, they hadn't beaten a ranked team, I don't think, for over a decade. So when they won that ball game, their students celebrated like they'd won a league championship or had won an NCAA game. So uh, I t told our squad afterwards, you know, don't let this happen to you again. It's a horrible feeling to lose a game when you know you haven't given everything you have in you. As a coach, you're always worried about a defeat like this, costing you maybe one or two more games down the line until you recover. That was still upmost in your mind. We go to Manhattan, I think they took that doubt out of your mind because Cowboys came out and played hard from the get-go. I was proud of the way our team uh, responded. I think they were very uh, focused in this game. Uh, I don't think we played a perfect game by any means, but. Uh, we played hard, and, and that's all a coach can ever ask of a group of young people, is to go out there and give your all, give your best, and, and uh, I thought we did that. Did a nice job on Kit, one of the relentless rebounders in the league. Just seven touches, interior defense, you had to like it. Our big people did a much better job defending uh, against uh, their inside game. Uh, they had some outside shooters that hit some big time shots for them, but. For the most part, when you looked at Brian and Frederick, Alex, Andre, uh, the guys that have to do most of the defense inside, they did an outstanding job. Nice high-low pass there by Brian down to Alex. Brian had a couple of feeds down low, uh, one to Fred we'll see a little bit later, but it was nice to have Brian back into the flow of things. Brian was much more active, more alert than he had been the last couple of ball games. There's Morrison, now he had some shots from deep against us. Can this guy shoot, or at least he did that night, and there's the active part of Brian that we see the last couple of games. This was the only free throw that we attempted in the first half, and Brian missed it, and only attempted 13 for the game, and that's one area we've got to get where we attack the basket better so that we do get to the line. The Cowboys were in control of this one. Desmond really had a start. great game. He sure did, 23 points. And again, he kind of set the tone for the rest of his teammates, but we talked about this on the radio show afterwards. That was really the recipe uh, that we've had. This was a kind of put him uh, the dagger in him as time was running out in the first half. Well, he not only scored points for us, he rebounded better than he had been rebounding, I think. And also, he, uh, he did a great job defensively when we were playing man. Now, we played a lot more zone. Now, we ran a special play to get the ball down on the low post for Desmond there, and he converted. Well, we, I was saying that that was the recipe for the first eight, nine wins of the year, where Mason, Montanati were providing balanced scoring, and then you got some scoring from Joe and Glenda. This is the way we kind of won all those games early on. I thought we played m much more like uh, we did when we took that West Coast trip to, to U UNLV in Washington. We did a good job late in the game when we had the big lead, understanding the clock management. There's Joe. Joe didn't score a lot of points. He got nine and he only hit three out of nine, but he really played a good ball game. He had nine assists in the ball game. There's uh, Doug hitting a drive and layup. You didn't start Doug, but you liked the way he played, especially in the second half. I thought he played better in the second half and played like uh, we need for him to play. Mm, that's a nice move right there, huh? Very nice move, and very course, strong move. That's what we tell those guys. You get it down there, take that ball hard to the basket, and if you do that, you're going to get fouled most of the time, and, and if, even if you don't, uh, you're probably going to hit the basket. And that move's going to be no good if you don't get the ball at the right time. I believe it was Atkins who got him the ball, got him the, the pass while he had the angle, and that's half the battle right there, getting in a good scoring position. That's correct. You know, we were talking about Desmond. He did a heck of a job on Cortez Groves. Groves is their leading scorer, and he was only 5 out of 19 from the field. Now, we probably played zone maybe 15 minutes in that ball game, and I thought our zone was much more active. But we rebounded better out of it, and for the most part, I thought when you grade the film as we did, I think we played a good basketball game. And you look at the way the players responded in the game, but also afterwards, talking to the man for man, and we'll ask Fred this a little bit, they knew that they had a 
redeem themselves is probably not the word, but they knew they had to get back in the win column in this stopover on the tour. Well, Coach Williams had the scouting report, and he kept using the word warriors. You've got to be warriors, and, and I think that's what uh, our team must understand. We've got to be blue-collar type players. We don't, you know, we don't have, we have very, very good talent, but not great talent. And our guys, uh, when you play hard, it shows up in rebound, it shows up in defense, it shows up in getting loose balls, taking charges, those little things that allow you to win. But I thought in this ball, ball game, we were really focused and uh, we played like, uh, uh, you know, people possessed. You got you to get in every game. Every game you play in conference play is going to be a nail biter. It's going to be tough regardless of whether you play at home or on the road. You know, that was your 901st game as a coach? No, it was more than that. Well, we're going to go back and give that <laughs> revised. Hey, I've coached 901 on the Division One level. <laughs> okay. Stay put. We got something for you here. You know, it just seems like yesterday when Eddie Sutton walked to the podium to tell the media well wishes just how happy he was to return to his alma mater as head basketball coach. You know, it's even harder to believe this is the 30th year for Eddie as a Division I head coach. Has he changed? Sure, we all do over a period of time. But the coaching profession, while demanding, can also keep you young. In his case, forever young. It's a great day for me and for Oklahoma State, and I'm so happy they're home and back home where they belong. You know, from the time that I first decided that I wanted to coach, and that was right here at Oklahoma State, I've always had a dream that one day I might come back to my alma mater.
that brings back a lot of wonderful memories. And, you know, Wade does such a great job in putting these pieces together, but he may have outdone himself. That's really a special piece. That is, because it brings back all those highlights and great moments. And hopefully we'll have a lot more to put, as you saw. We didn't end it to be continued. So we have a few more years to uh, add to that. Hopefully. I hope so. Okay. As promised, Frederick Janzen will be with us here on the show. And we're going to talk with Fred when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. We're going to give Brian a little credit for the pass when, yeah. in fact, it was a shot that was you ended shot. up he with got, it. He got blocked, I think. But, hey, just let's up. just let him have a pass, All let right. him have an assist, <laughs> make him look like an interior passer. We promised you this, but we're going to start off our interview first. All of us in the media probably at some time or other have butchered your last name. So I want you to tell everybody on the show right now, last time, how do you pronounce your last name? It's uh, Fredrik Jönsson. Jönsson. I'm saying I heard a lot of different yeah, different ways, but that's that's the way you say it. You and I <laughs> butchered it more than anyone. I know it. We get, you know, it's kind of like the Heinz 57. We call it about 57 different names. But one thing that's for sure, he's playing really well. Playing great. You know, I've uh, had a lot of wonderful players through the years, but I'm not sure I've ever had a player from the first year to the second year that has improved any more than Frederick has. And is really a very valuable player to this ball club, you know. He's worked his way into a starting position, and he deserves to be there, and I think his teammates know that. How do you like that starting role? I like it. It's, you know, the first couple of games, it was a little different. You know, you have to adjust a little bit. But, you know, I, I like it, and hopefully I'll get started some more games. You know, Frederick also is one of our star uh, students. Mm -hmm. He really makes wonderful grades. But, you know, I think he ought to uh, tell our, our fans a little bit about his family. He's got a wonderful family. Yeah, my parents, uh, you know, they're both from Sweden, and they com came over uh, this Christmas, actually, because my sister lives in Denver. Mm -hmm. So they came to Las Vegas game and watched that, and uh, then we all spent Christmas in, in Denver, which was real fun. You know, I haven't been with my whole family since I don't know when. And they listen on the time. Internet. Yeah, oh, yeah, they listen to every game <laughs> on the Internet. So What uh, is the time? When our, if a game tips off here at 7 o'clock, what time is it? In? It's 7 hours, so let's see, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so my dad, he you know, he always sets uh, the alarm clock and gets up. In the <laughs> the it might be a nap in order yeah, prior to yeah. that. Tell us about the summer now. I know we've talked about your improvement, and did the play this summer did that help you that much? Well, I don't know. I mean, I played a I played a lot this summer with the national team and and everything, but I think just coming back to season, knowing you know what to expect and everything, and uh, not being a newcomer, I think that helped me a lot too. You know, one thing, uh, I love our country, and I wouldn't want to live anywhere else, and basketball's afforded me an opportunity to travel over the world, but I really had a thrill when Patsy and I got to go to his, his country. Sweden is the cleanest country I've ever been in, marvelous people. So if any of our fans ever want to go to a real neat place and leave our country, Sweden is it. Are you kind of liking this weather? Is this just like yeah, it is yeah. in Sweden? Yeah, you know, it's been snowing now for two days, and it's, it's just like Sweden. Okay, give us your take quickly on the way the Cowboys played at Kansas State. As a team, you knew you had to come back and get that one put in the win column. Oh, yeah. I mean, after the loss at A&M, uh, you know, we all knew we had to come back and do a better job. Uh, and I think we responded pretty good against K-State. Uh, they played a zone a lot during the game, and we had some high-low action with Weber, uh, Brian, and me. So I think we did a good job, and Desmond really stepped up, too. Fred, we appreciate you coming down, as always. We'll see you a little bit later. We're going to come back to wrap it all up after this final timeout. Well, there's our question of the week. Where does he rank? Mark, Desmond ranks very high on my list. I've been very fortunate with a lot of outstanding athletes, but Desmond is a special young man. Well, let's go to our notebook. I know that's special to you each and every week. We've got three rather timely topics to discuss here. Our first one is one more look and now officials can go to the TV monitor and see whether a shot's been uh, valid at the end of regulation and also overtime. The rules committee this week uh, had a phone conversation and now they can rule on a last second shot regulation overtime 
Good rule. How about this next item? Wait a minute. You were eagle eye on the bench. You got the right guy on the free throw line. Well, he tried to slip in Groves at the free throw line when we had fouled Hal, and I finally convinced Bill Kennedy that it was the wrong decision. He checked with the other officials, agreed, apologized. They put the right shooter up there. He missed both of them. Heck of a travel agent getting us back late from there, huh? Well, we came back in a big snowstorm, <laughs> but we did get back. Those private aircraft that people help us with really, really help us. Oh, Baylor at noon. Baylor, go to church early, tip off 12 o'clock. We beat them, I think, uh, by 15 the first time around. They won their latest game with Texas Tech, better ball club. Be there to help us. Okay, remember, tip off time in Gallagher Ibarine Arena against Baylor. That's at noon on Sunday. For Eddie Sutton, our entire crew here at Educational Television Services, Tom Dorado. Goodbye, everybody.